today. I swear to God, Facebook was trying to hold me back, but it is not going to happen, right? Not today. I've done this live stream three times, and it ain't gonna live once. I'm a hundred percent that bitch Even when I'm crying crazy Yeah, I got boyfriend That is how I'm feeling today Ain't gonna hold me down You hold me back Gotta play it in a big grade Alright, I'm gonna go I'm gonna get to work now. <laughs> oh my God, y'all just don't know. Since 1.45, I have been doing live streams and Facebook kept going, I don't know why it's not showing up, but it's not showing up live, ever. I'm telling you, I'm like, no. This is going live today. We gonna make this happen. We will figure out the technology challenges, by the way. I still don't know what the technology challenge is, but you know what? Turns out I did the DNA test and I'm 100% that chick, so we made it happen anyway. I was not going to give up. Anyway, I am literally, I don't know if you guys know, I am literally 100% on this no questions asked push. I am going to create millionaires. That is all I'm about right now. I am going to give people financial freedom from, um, um, corporate colonization. I am going to give you that if that's what you want. That is who I am. It is going to happen. I am the Harriet Tubman of experts who are ready to get off the colony and who are ready to jump into being an entrepreneur. Don't quit your job. Don't do that. Lord have mercy, don't do that. But when you're ready, know that I'm that chick that's going to make sure it happens. Anyway, what's up, people? I've had a crazy day today. My name is Donna St. Louis. And whenever I have a moment, you know what I do? I go and put on some crazy ass music that I absolutely love, like uh, Lil Lizzo. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, we got to get it going. And so, yes, that's how I've been feeling today. Anyway, it is all about getting your swerve on in your business today. Because guess what? Sometimes, sometimes you got to get your swerve on in order to move forward. Get your swerve on in order to move forward. So if you sitting here watching right now and you like, I just tuned in because this redhead chick looked like she was losing her mind. And you wonder who I am? My name is Donna St. Louis, and while, yes, I am totally unmedicated, <laughs> I am also the CEO of HighProfitZone.com. I am an international keynote speaker, and if you're like, for real, like when you say you're a CEO, like a lot of people say they're a CEO, well, I'll give you a little bit of history, tiny bit, tiny bit. I was homeless when I was 19, I got into IT, and then... I built a business, a business intelligence company, which is a tech consultancy that produced or predicted the future of business because we can't produce the future. People are sensitive about that. We predicted the future of business. I sold that business in 2008 for $250 million. And now today I do two things. I have my own keynote speaking company. So I go travel around the world delivering keynote speeches and standing on stages and saying whatever the hell I feel like. But then the other thing is, is I am very passionate about helping people have financial freedom from corporate colonization. Listen, not everybody is meant to have a job. I wasn't. In fact, the only time I had a job was when I ran a company um, <laughs> successfully. I So not everybody is meant to have a boss. Um, not everybody is meant to work for somebody for 30 years. Not everybody is meant to have a nine to five. Not everybody is made out to be that person. There are some people who do it and do it extremely well, but then they have a bigger dream that they are chasing. And you know what? I want to make that chase just a little shorter and make that success just a little bigger. Um, so that's what we're going to talk today. All week, by the way, we've talked about sales, fear of, fear of negotiating. Um, what is your ideal 
uh, what not who your ideal client is. We didn't do that one this week, but we did talk about your value proposition and how to communicate that. We're now going to talk about getting your swerve on in your business. We're going to talk all about getting your swerve on in your business. And of course, I was swerving my ass off today because Facebook was like, and I was like, <laughs> like, it was just, it would not work, but I was not going to let that stop me. Seriously, if I had to come to your house and just sit in your window and be like, hey, I'm going to talk to you about getting your swerve on today. I was going to come to your house today. You were going to get this message. So I'm here. You're here. Ain't nothing between us, but time and opportunity. So let's make it happen. So what do I mean when I'm talking about getting your swerve on in your business? Specifically, what happens is there are three basic things, super basic things that you have to have in your business if you want that business to be successful. Number one, you are definitely going to need no questions asked to know your particular area of expertise. If you do not know your area of expertise, you will be a jack of all trades, which means you will be chasing the dollar like nobody's business. People will be calling you to do some of anything. You will basically just work yourself into a job. You will not have the laptop lifestyle. You will not live a lifestyle business and you will work your ass off doing stuff many times that you don't necessarily love. Number two, the second thing you absolutely positively need is you need to know how to communicate that expertise. You have, and specifically, you have to communicate that expertise to people who give a damn. If you say, listen, I'm going to show you how to, um, I'm going to show you how to get around. Like if you had that shark bite and you only got one leg, I'm going to show you how to get around. Quite honestly, people who got two legs and ain't getting in the ocean don't care. So you got to make sure that what you are communicating, what's up, my girl, Don Marie? You have to make sure that whatever you're communicating it, communicating, you are communicating it not only to your target market, but to a target rich environment. See, a lot of people know, even if they know who their target market is, they are saying and spraying. They're like all over the place. They're looking for, they're looking for people where they ain't, where they're not at. Seriously. They're looking for a little people at a tall, tall man's convention. They're not going to be there, boo. You in the wrong spot. You might need to go over to a different spot. So that's number two. You have to make sure that you are speaking to your target market, target market in a target rich environment. Otherwise, you're going to do a whole lot of talking and ain't nobody going to be listening. And then number three, you have to know not only how you deliver your expertise the best, but also what's the best place and the best way of that expertise being delivered. It has to be a combination of both. All right. So let me go ahead and lay this down and give you some very, very specific examples. So I had a client that I worked with for years, for years, for years, and he wanted to be a keynote speaker. So when we first started out, he made it crystal clear that he wanted to be a keynote speaker. And what he talked about specifically, even though I did not agree with his subject, what he talked about was YouTube. And I kept saying, YouTube does not make you an expert. YouTube is a, is a tool. So, and he goes, well, I'm a social media expert. And I'm like, all social media? So tell me about Instagram and VK and all these little obscure ones that are out there. And then he was like, well, not that. I'm like, so what are you exactly? So you really need to know what your expertise is. Turns out that what he knew how to do really well, even though, yes, it had to do with YouTube, he knew the secret strategies to turn YouTube in a monetization machine. And in a very short amount of time, like he knew how to do it within three to six months. So he knew how to create the type of videos that would really get attention so you could do a high monetization on YouTube. Okay, great. We know what your expert at is. You have this strategy. The problem with that, I'll be honest, the one of the biggest problems that I found with his expertise is that his expertise was dependent upon a platform. So if that, pl that platform went away, like, I don't know, what was the one? Microsoft Friends Network or whatever they had. If that platform goes away, all of a sudden your expertise loses value. So you have to kind of stay on top of your game in regards to being nimble and going towards another um, platform. But still, that's where he was. That's what he was talking about. How do you leverage expertise? How do you leverage YouTube strategically so you can monetize that platform? So you can monetize your message. All right. So that's what he talked about. The second thing was, okay, well, who do you talk to? Well, specifically, he was talking to people who were influencers 
or wanted to be influencers and they were really chasing fame and they needed to know how to make money from fame, right? Because I tell people all the time, you're either chasing fame or fortune. Pick one. I'm going to tell you right now, I know a lot of people who chase fame and make absolutely no dollars. Like they are still broke, but everybody know who they are. And now everybody know that they're a broke ass. But anyway, you got to chase fame or chase fortune. So he was working with people who chased fame so they would have fortune. He specifically knew who his target market was. And then we went into a little deeper area and started looking for up and coming influencers, people who are a little heavier on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and YouTube, people who are posting more than normal. So we started getting all the things to find out who those people was, who those people were. And then we even started working with organizations to tell organizations, okay, how to do that. Now, here's where we go to number three. Number three was who, how he was going to deliver this and where he was going to deliver it. This is where he ran into a problem. He said, and I quote, I am going to be a keynote speaker. I said, on what? He said, I'm going to be a keynote speaker on how to monetize, how to you leverage YouTube in order to, to monetize your message. And I'm like, that's not a keynote speech. That's not a keynote speech. That's a how to breakout program. That breakout program can be delivered to a general session, but that's not a keynote speech. No, that's what I'm going to do. And he was a hundred percent. That's what I'm going to do. I am going to deliver this keynote speech period. The end, like he made that. And I said, I understand what you're saying, but maybe you're not understanding the difference between a keynote speech and a breakout session. So then we laid that down and he goes, no, I'm going to be the opening speaker, which is a keynote speaker, general session. I'm going to be delivering that keynote speech. And I said, I love you with all my heart. You're going to get a couple of engagements and then you're going to be broke because people are not going to hire you. Lo and behold, what happened? He wasn't getting hired. Bureaus weren't paying attention to him. He wanted the keynote spot, wouldn't take anything else. And at the end of the day, he ended up not getting very many engagements. In fact, I stopped coaching him because he would not take my advice. So then after a while, he recognized that maybe he was delivering in the wrong spot, which by the way, this is common to have one of these three wrong. It's okay that you have one of these three wrong. It really is. But then talk to someone so they can help you put it in the right spot. So then we started talking about it and I said, we need to make sure that you are delivering this in a breakout session. So then he started delivering in a breakout session and then he was getting hired a lot more. So now all of a sudden he's at, um, there's a big one called mom bloggers or something like that. So he, he was speaking at conferences like that. He was speaking at these huge blogging conferences. He's showing up to the LinkedIn conferences. He's showing up to all these other social media conferences that are telling people how to leverage video. And so now all of a sudden he's getting booked because he is putting his content in front of his target market, but in a way that they want to get it. That was the important part. And then what we did was because, and the reason by the way he wanted keynote was because he said, Keynote speech is going to be easily fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, and I'm like, that is true. However, you might want to take breakout session. Well, breakout sessions don't necessarily always pay as well. Well, what you do in that situation is that then your delivery mechanism at the back of the room has to change. So what we did was we came up with a package that was around twelve hundred dollars that he could sell at the back of the room. So here he is getting paid three to five thousand for his breakout session. But at the end of the day, he's selling twelve to twenty thousand dollars worth of um, content, worth of stuff. Also at the breakout. Thank you, Latif. Anyway, he sent me a message. Anyway, he's selling that at the back of the room. So at the end of the day, he's still making that twenty thousand dollars per engagement. He does twelve engagements a year. He made a quick, you know, two hundred forty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So sometimes you have to think about that differently. The other thing that you could get wrong is you could get wrong your initial message, right? You could get that message wrong in regards to, oh, this is the thing that I'm going to be uh, delivering, right? If that message is too vague and people don't know what it's for, my favorite is when people call me and go, I'm going to help people get over roadblocks. And I'm like, which roadblock? It is the number one thing that people call me and say. 
It's okay that you say that, but understand that we have to go much, much deeper. We have to know who, what, what expertise you're bringing to the table, why people want that expertise, and then how they're going to leverage that expertise. It has to be all three of them, right? And so I've had people, I had this one lady, oh my God, I loved her because she was absolutely brilliant. And she really uh, taught people how to make more money in sales. But specifically, she was working in multi-level marketing. The problem was is that she wanted to go into corporate environment and she wanted to tell their salespeople how they could make more money as a side gig. Well, while salespeople might be interested in how they can make more money as a side hustle in multi-level marketing, their corporation is not going to pay them, pay you to come in and tell them that. They're not going to take that time off their calendar. You see what I mean? And so you guys right now might be going, well, oh, Donna, of course. Well, that's obvious. Duh. It's, it sounds really, really, really obvious. I know it does. And I am totally simplifying it. But you really have to understand that most people, I'm using the simplest examples that I can. However, I will be honest, most people are, their stuff is so tightly coupled that they have a hard time kind of putting it together, right? They have a hard time like making that transition over. It seems like it's super obvious. Most people are not focused on what the... um they're focused on what they can do and not necessarily on what their ideal client wants. And so what happens when I start talking about your swerve is that you could be in your car going 100 miles an hour. you like, I got this business in the backseat. We are rolling down the street. And the more you roll, the harder it gets. But you got, the, you got your foot all the way down to the pedal and you're rolling really hard. And all of a sudden, you start running into this brick wall. You got a choice. You got to be bullheaded as hell and keep rolling to that brick wall or you got to swerve. And that swerve means that you got to change one of those three things in your focus. You got to change either who your ideal client is. You got to change what your expert. I'm sorry, let me do that backwards. You got to change what your expertise is or how you package that expertise. You got to change either who your ideal client is or you got to change how you deliver it. It's one of those three. And it may be two of those three. Hell, it may be all of them. But at the end of the day, you have to ensure that you are helping people with their transformation and that you are very specific that this expertise is not just what I can talk about. It's what people want, right? It's not just what I want to talk about. It's what they want. And then what they want in a way that you can deliver it. It has to be all three. If it's not all three, you're going to need to swerve in your business and make some make some dis- different decisions. And so you might be going, okay, so um, Donna, why don't people just swerve? It's not like you're over here talking about rocket science. This ain't brain surgery. Why don't they just serve? The answer to that is so simple. It's called the lack of recognition of sunk cost. They've already invested in things like, I've already put money in my website. I've already put money in my logo. I've already trademarked this particular tagline. I've already made a video. I've already put together all this collateral. See, they've already sunk money. I've already written the book. They've already sunk cost in all of these things. And so because they've always sunk, because they've already sunk cost in all of these things, then they don't recognize that, that they might, they might be able to still leverage 70% of it, but they're going to have to make a swerve in their business in order to really make an ROI. It's not about what the speaker wants. Right. And, and I'm going to change that just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, Don. It's not just about what the speaker can deliver on an expert level. It's about what the audience recognizes that they want. People would rather be right than be successful. Oh my God, ain't that the truth? But I will tell you, I'm very fortunate that I do get a lot of people that come in that by the time they come to me, we have such honest conversations and they're like, let me just tell you what's not working. And so it's really less about being right and it is more about, okay, by the time they get to me, here's the sad part of my job. By the time people get to me, a lot of times, not all the time, a lot of times they're already beyond frustration and they've already sunk a lot of money, right? Um, that's the sad part. 
Um, the good part is that usually we can we can make a change so quickly that there it's not a lot of sunk costs, it's not a lot of time wasted, and they can move forward quickly. So I'm lucky in that people feel comfortable being very, very, very honest with me. What is unfortunate is that by the time they got to me, they've already sunk money in their website. They've spent all their time making the newest, sexiest logo. They're so concerned about making things pretty that they don't recognize that they haven't made things right. And a lot of times people aren't willing to make the turn. Um, I have someone um, that I've known for for probably like eight years now, and they talk about um, innovation. And turns out that what they really should be talking about is process, but it's just about packaging it better. It says, love that. You help them see the light. You're not lucky. You figured out. Oh, yeah, I'm not lucky. Oh, oh, God, let me tell you. Um, no, 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 no. I, let me... The universe is so good to me that the universe will give me a sign and the universe will say, you know, Donna, I really think you should be doing X. And I'll be like, eh, I don't know, whatever. And then I'll, and then I'll just keep going. Like, in fact, when the universe comes to me and says, girl, listen, you need to be doing X. I actually take my foot, right? And I put like stone, like metal boots on and I get on the acceleration harder, right? What's up, Cynthia? What's up, Chef Tia? I put on the acceleration harder. I go faster, right? And then the universe is like, hey, um, you know what? I don't know if you heard me the last time, but for real though, you probably, like you should probably make this left right here. And I'm like, you don't even know who you're playing with. And I put on another boot and I'm like, press harder and I go like this and I close my eyes like I'm going this way like I could be stubborn as hell right and then what happens is the universe comes up and it gets a folding chair and it just smacks me in the face and then after that I'm like oh don't go that way so, <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie I've I've done the I paid somebody forty thousand dollars not a year because that would have been a gift I pay forty thousand dollars to somebody to do sales for me. I've I've done that. You know what doesn't work? Paying somebody money to do sales for you. You actually probably have to do it initially, and then after you get that process down, make it happen. Um, I've paid someone to waterboard me with content because in two days I was going to know everything I needed to know about the speaking business or about the entrepreneurial business. I was going to do all of that. Like they, they were going to teach me everything, everything. And I was going to take everything. And in two days I was going to walk away and I was going to make a million dollars. And I, I can't tell you how many times I spent money on that shit. Um, right, like just, I will tell, let me tell you, I forgot completely ignored the fact that I had the blueprint. I acted like the consulting, coaching, and speaking business wasn't a business. And because I ignored the fact that that was a business, that it was a business, I didn't even use my own blueprint. So I, I spent money on stupid, stupid stuff. I was like, I was being the Elon Musk of entrepreneurs. I was taking my own money and sinking it back into my business and just watching my business 100%, just draining money like it was cool. And I literally had to say, you know what? And I do this at the beginning of the year. What if I took all the money that I have at the end of the year and I give myself a very specific stipend, whether it's 5,000, 7,500, $10,000, whatever that number is, and I put that dollar amount away, everything else goes we ain't gonna talk about where it goes, but it goes where I can't touch it. Y'all don't need to be in my offshore business, but it goes, it goes where I can't touch it, right? So it goes where I can't touch it. And this is all I can invest in my business this year. Like I had to make those types of decisions and doing that type of thing actually made it, made me much smarter in regards to where I invested my money because I did not want to be like Elon Musk. I did not want to be a billionaire who couldn't pay my rent and sleeping on somebody else's floor because you know, I know the answer. I had to recognize that I didn't know the answer. That's when I went and got my book. That's when I said, let me go back to my own blueprint. And I started eating my own dog food. Once I, when I started doing that, that's when I started being successful. And I realized I was being entirely too general. I was not picking a lane. 
I wasn't doing anything. Everybody always says pick a lane. Let me tell you what pick a lane looks like because it can be very, very confusing. If you want to have more money in your bank account, reduce, if you want to have more commas in your bank account, reduce the commas in your expertise. The, you guys, what am I expert on? I turn experts into entrepreneurship. I turn experts into entrepreneurs. I turn, ex so what do I talk about? Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. And I'm even more specific. I don't do any, like if you're like, Donna, I want to build a storefront. And I'm like, well, congratulations, because that's not me, right? I am more of the person who says, how do I turn your, your intellectual property into dollars? I remember you sharing that you begin the year with, yes, I do. So Dawn, I start the year, I start every year. It's between five and $10,000. And I will take that money and I will invest that money back into my business. And I do that every year. Same amount every year. Based on how my year was the last year, I might just use a percentage, right? And so what I do is I'm like, this amount from last year is this amount that I can use for this year. Everybody's like, oh, but it's lucky for you because, you know, you have all that money from when you sold your business to... No, I don't. I started off just like many people who want to start a business at the beginning of the year. I started off the same exact way. I make sure that I don't have more money in there than I should spend. I don't end up spending it on stupid stuff. It makes me strategize smarter, right? So I'm not telling anybody to do anything that I would not do at all, nothing. So when people say, I'm going to spend $10,000 on my website, did you plan for that, that last year or are you just pulling that out your ass this year? You have to plan appropriately. But anyway, if you're going to be successful in your business, you have to have a focus. And while you're focused on that goal, there might be things that come up in the road that you might have to swerve and get past. You have to be smart about that swerve. You can't swerve and go off road. That's crazy. Sometimes you might even have to take a left turn and a detour to get to that because you're going the wrong direction in the first place. So we want to make sure that you're super smart about the swerve. Are you swerving in your business the right way? And if you don't know how to swerve in your business, that's what High Profit Zone is for. That's why we have these amazing family members. Like I just saw my girl Julie Holmes was on. I just saw Cynthia was on, right? It's not about doing all the things. It's not about doing all the things. It's not about doing the book and the video and the online class and the blah, blah, blah and all those things. It's about doing the right things that are right for your business, right? And so you guys have seen me on this journey. I started High Profit Zone a year and a half ago. High Profit Zone is extremely successful because I am consistently eating my own dog food. I, you guys have watched me start a business following my own methodology. So I'm not telling you to do something that I don't do myself. And that's why people who come out of High Profit Zone who follow my methodology all the way through from idea all the way out to sales are successful. It's the methodology. It's not about being like me. It's about leveraging a strategy that works for you and works for business. Anyway, the new High Profit Zone program is getting ready to start. And I will tell Dawn Marie and hey, Craig. What's up, Craig? Hi, family. I love you. I miss you. Um, anyway, one of the things that has been really successful is, um, what was I going to tell you guys? See, Craig, you messed me up. Oh, so High Profit Zone. We have our new program starting right now. We're picking our dates right now for October, November. It is not as expensive as you think it is. I swear to you, we have a six and an eight pay plan, right? So you're like six and eight pay before November. No, I didn't say you had to pay it before November. I said we have a six and an eight pay plan. So the goal is you put a thousand dollars down. You pick whether you want the six pay plan. You six would pick whether you want the eight pay plan. My job is to make sure that you're actually making that money before the eight pay. And then of course, once you graduate from High Profit Zone program, you can get into our coaching program. And our coaching program is where we make help you make your first hundred and twenty thousand dollars that year. And we only take we take fifteen percent of your first one twenty. You can make five hundred thousand. 
We only take 15% of your first 120. And if you're in our accountability group, we take 20% of your first 120. Everything else, you can make $500,000. It's still only 120. And we still coach you beyond the 120. Anyway, if you guys are interested and you're tired of the struggle, you're tired of the BS, you're tired of sitting there going, Ugh, this just ain't working. You're tired of trying to figure out what you should do next. You're tired of paying for the things that, that, that magic bullet, oh, my magic bullet is my website. My magic bullet is my one sheet. My magic bullet is my video. My magic bullet is my pictures. My magic bullet, there's not a magic bullet. There's a magic bomb, which means you got to put a whole bunch of stuff in it to make it work. Like it is a super magic bomb. Anyway, that is the truth. That is what we're doing today. And just in case you guys missed it, let me see if I, my music is up. This is how I started off and this is how I'm going to end. Oh, they gotta be great. DNA test turns out I'm a hundred percent that chick. That's how I feel today, guys. If you're interested, all you gotta do is go to highprofitzone.com. Highprofitzone.com. That's where we are today. Check it out. Go to Donna Coffee with Donna.com. Set up a time to talk to me. I just talked to Maria, which I thought it was so cute. She was like. I had a bunch of entrepreneurs and you're the only one who called me back. I'm like, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? I don't understand that. Let me tell you, I will never, ever, ever be too big where I cannot get on the phone with anybody ever, ever, ever. That is, I will never be that person. I'm going to say it once and I've said it a thousand times. Honey, there is nothing you can tell me that you did or where you are that I'm going to judge. I was homeless which means at the end of the day, I made some dumbass mistakes. I, I guarantee you, my mistakes trump your mistakes. So I have no judgment. I have tons of ideas. And how can I help you turn your, mwah, turn your expertise into an entrepreneurial business? We only have two or three spots left for the High Profit Zone program. It's time, oh, my High Profit Zone family members get so much swag. In fact, the last swag was designed and selected by Julie Holmes, and it is amazing swag. I don't give out swag that people's gonna throw away. We have some swagnificent swag, and Julie picked the last one. Tia got one. Everybody who comes from High Profit Zone, they they get a they get a bag they get a swag bag when they walk in. So yeah, we got we got some swagnificence. We do. We have some boss ass swagnificence. So yeah, it, it's crazy. So seriously, if you're tired of the, if you know if you're tired of the struggle, if you want clarity, I will tell you the best text message that I got yesterday. Um, I'm gonna actually share this with you. It was one of the cool text messages. It's from two of my high profit zone family members. I think a fruit fly. Just um, flew down my throat. <laughs> I hate fruit flies. I'm literally just going to start eating carbs so I don't have fruit flies in my house. I'm so serious right now. Um, here, Okay, here it is. This is one of the nicest things. And by the way, they were talking to each other. I just happened to connect them so, and they didn't take me off. This is one of the things they said. The reason, they said, the reason that I came to high profit zone and became a family member is because I could have done all this by myself because I've already been successful and it would have taken me 18 to 24 months. I consider it money well worth it to shrink the launch phase to about three months. By the way, I'm already three weeks in and I'm almost done. Oh, Stevie Dawn, I was just talking about you. So it was between Stevie Dawn and Elizabeth. I was just reading a piece of the text. Uh, who wrote this? Stevie wrote, wait, was it Stevie? No, no, no. Um, Elizabeth wrote this part where it said it would take about 18 months. She said it would take about 18 months. And she considers this a great investment to shrink the launch phase to about three months. And she's already like, She's already like halfway through and Stevie Dawn is killing it too. And that's one of the things they, that they said. And even Stevie Dawn was like, yes. And Stevie Dawn was like clarity, 100% what I need is clarity. And that's what we're working towards. And I was just talking about that. And so that's what we do. We help shrink that timeline 
from you getting from idea to making money and we help you have clarity because that's the fastest way to shrink the timeline. So that way you don't have to swerve in your business, right? We want to reduce the number of swerves that you need to do because that's, that's an ass kicker when you got to constantly swerve in your business for damn sure. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I love you. I love your family members. Yeah, make sure you guys do hashtag family member. Stevie Dawn. Oh, by the way, I call her Stevie Ray Dawn. Stevie Dawn. <laughs> Y'all have to call her Dr. Stevie though. I'm just saying. Um, this Because she is a doctor. Stevie Dawn and um, who else do we have? Julie is on. And there are a couple other family members. I know we got some future family members. Like, they're going to be marrying in soon. <laughs> uh, wait, is my girl Lisa on? Oh, Lisa is on. Lisa is on. Lisa actually loves, and I'm using the word love. You asked me about swag. Lisa loves her swag that she got at her last HPZ. And Julie designed that swag because Julie is an innovative monster. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. If you are ready... Go to highprofitzone.com or quite honestly, get on my calendar next week. I do have some spots available that I, if you try to get on this week, you were screwed. Um, just saying there was 24, there were 24 people on the calendar this week. Um, but if you are really interested, go to highprofitzone.com or go to coffeewith.donna.com. Get on the calendar. It's time for you to stop messing around with your business. It's time for you to start making money. The next retreat is going to be in October, November time frame. Regardless, if you cannot make it to October, November, it's not that big of a deal. You start the program the moment you put down a deposit. There is a six to eight month pay window. So there's plenty of time to pay for it. You're good to go. You're ready to go. You're ready for this. Okay, let's do this. Time. This is my favorite line. Y'all know my favorite line is in here, right? Like my favorite line. Right? Why? I did a DNA test, turns out I'm a hundred percent that chick. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the crazy part applies too. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. This could be me all day by myself in the house, losing my mind, driving my neighbors cray cray. Holla, and that's me not calling you back. Why? Right.